everyone and welcome to Variety Varnish. My name is Sheila and today we are going to talk about Olive Ave Polish and I'm so excited to be chatting with you guys today about this new brand from Walker of Olive Ave Nails. I actually purchased these right when she announced it um, at the Kickstarter that she did in January. I saw these colors, I saw her live swatches, and I said to myself, I have to absolutely have this whole collection. And so here we are, I'm actually wearing Kala Lily. Is that how you say it? I never know how to say it. Is it Kaya Lily or Kala Lily? But, um, so I'm wearing the green one on my fingers right now. And if you follow me on Instagram, I had said that I thought that this didn't look good on me. Well, I changed my mind. I really think that in real life, this is so flattering to my skin tone. So if you have a similar skin tone to me, I would not hesitate to pick this one up. But anyway, I digress. Uh, Olivevepolish.com is live now. So you can purchase these polishes in case you didn't get it from the Kickstarter. They are $9.50 each, but you do get, I think, two bundles of three of the polishes. It's so cute. It's, um I think, uh, April showers and May flowers bundle. So it's, you know, like the, the polishes were divvied up into three. And then of course, I think you can get the bundle um, for I think $52 or $54. I'm not really sure, but yeah, so they're live. If you sign up for their newsletter, you will get 10% off. So a lot of people have already live swatched these polishes. So I don't think I'm gonna do that instead I'm gonna do some comparisons the way I usually do my creams with Essies and stuff like that because these are colors that are absolutely beautiful but um, you might be curious to know if they are unique or not. And I think I am in a good position to be able to do comparisons because I am just a hoarder of these colors. <laughs> like these colors, I have, I have quite a few of these shades and so, um, I'm also gonna mainly use some polishes that are not 10 free, not vegan or cruelty free because I think that's really like the niche of this line. And you know, if you are somebody who wants to do something for the environment and for animals and you don't wanna support brands that don't do, you know, their share of, you know, being kinder to our planet, then this would be a perfect line for you. And so, yeah, I think that's a long enough introduction and we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I have my trusty swatch crown right here and I'm gonna be cheap and actually use this up as much as I possibly can. Um, so I'm probably gonna use like two, you know, comparisons in each whatever. Um, I do have polishes that only have one comparison and some that have two. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this alphabetically and I'm gonna start with Kala Lily. So Kala Lily is this beautiful sort of green with a very strong, not sort of green, why would I say sort of green? It is a green, um, but it's more like a, I don't know, pastel green with a very strong yellow shimmer. And I think this is a beautiful polish. You can see it as I am wearing it right now, just absolutely gorgeous. And I think it is honestly fairly unique. I tried to look for something similar in my collection and I only found one. And this is Essie's Fashion Playground. And this is actually one of my favorite polishes. I wore this for Easter a few years back and it's just absolutely beautiful. So I'm gonna show you a bottle shot of that. So Fashion Playground also has a little bit of shimmer, but the shimmer is more like a, like a silver, kind of like a pearly shimmer and this is not at all evident on the nail whereas Calla Lily just has that beautiful flash of gold or yellow in there that's just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm gonna swatch these two and I am actually going to do Calla Lily on the very end right there and if my light is a little warmer it's because I'm actually um 
using a little bit of sunlight because there's actually for once in my life there's sun to in the winter where I live and I I just had to open the window I can't just you know shut everything so I'm sorry about the shadow and like I'm sorry if it's a bit warmer and it's, the lighting is not as neutral but I can't I need my vitamin D even though it's just from the window so that is calla lily right there and the formula is a little bit thin and runny, but it's not unworkable. And it's also sheer, so it has some top abilities. Um, you can use this as a topper, but I did um, layer this into three coats to get my opacity right there on my nail. So as you can see, that is an absolutely gorgeous green. And of course, I didn't open my bottle of uh, Fashion Playground, so I'm like struggling there for a minute, but I'm gonna swatch Fashion Playground right next to it. And as you can see, this is definitely a little less warm because it doesn't have that, um, that yellow shimmer. And as you can see the formula, even though my Fashion Playground is like an, a much older bottle, it's kind of the same runny formula. So this is something that I have come to expect on these types of colors. And so, you know, you just, you just have to work for it, I guess. So yeah, those are the comparisons. As you can see, um, Fashion Playground is coming off a tad bit more pastel. It's definitely more opaque, I think, but at the same time, it doesn't really have that strong yellow shimmer. But I mean, I don't know what your goals are, but if you do have Fashion Playground, I think it definitely gives the same vibe um, as Calla Lily. And so those are my comparisons. So I was being a bit of a dummy when I said I was going to do this alphabetically because I should have probably started with Aster. But here we are, Aster. As soon as I saw Aster, it reminded me of my favorite little blue box from New York City. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's Tiffany's. This is an absolutely gorgeous Tiffany blue color, in my opinion. Everybody's describing it as a mint. And yes, to a certain extent, it's a mint. But this just reminds me of my favorite little blue box. Now, the one other polish I have in my collection that is very much Tiffany is this one right here and this is Essie's Blossom Dandy and this is actually my favorite mint from Essie. I think it has a great formula considering this type of color. Um, I very much prefer this over mint candy apple and so I'm gonna swatch these two for you. And so I'm gonna do Aster right on the other end here. Oh my goodness, that is so beautiful. So I know I'm a yellow lover, but I think this may be in the running for my favorite among the bunch. I mean, this is just an absolutely beautiful, well done, very well done blue. I mean, look at that. If that doesn't scream Tiffany to you, I don't know what does. I'm so excited over this color. But yeah, so that is Aster. And I'm gonna do Blossom Dandy on the other side. The formula is excellent, at least on the swatch stick. Um, now I can't wait to wear this. I really can't. So that is Blossom Dandy right there. So as you can see, they are fairly, fairly similar. Just absolutely gorgeous. I do think that maybe Aster has a tad bit more white, I'm not sure, let's see. Cause like I'm just literally playing with these polishes for the first time today. But yeah, so as you can see, Aster has a little bit more white than Blossom Dandy. But again, they're very similar as to, you know, being dupes, they're very similar. They definitely give off the same vibe. And it's just, these two are absolutely gorgeous polishes. Um, I think it's very hard to get Blossom Dandy now. And of course, if you want a cleaner formula, Aster is a very, 
very good option for you guys. The next polish I have for you is Corn Flower, and this is the sort of periwinkle blue, but not really quite periwinkle um, that uh, Walker created. So this is absolutely beautiful. And I'm just gonna bring in KL Polishes St. Clair right there. And I know they have been compared prior, um, but I just wanted to give you a quick bottle shot. Very, very close to each other, if I may say so. St. Clair has a tad bit more white and cornflower is a bit richer. And then of course there's Essie's Bikini Sotini. Bikini Sotini is definitely much more whiter than these two. And of course it has that shimmer in there, the same shimmer that Fashion Playground has that never shows up on the nail. But I'm gonna take away St. Clair because I know even Walker did a comparison to that, but I wanted to bring in Zoyas Emerson, because this is a new, um, you know, release from Zoya, and you can see that this is definitely not even close at all to cornflower, so they're very different. Um, so I'm gonna take this away, and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna swatch, because these are really, I mean, I could bring out other periwinkles that I have, but these two are the closest to cornflower, so I just wanted to swatch these three for you guys. So I'm gonna put cornflower right smack in the middle, as I always do when I do like three of these comparisons. And again, formula is not awful. It's really like this beautiful, rich cornflower blue. And that's it right there. I love like, I think more than, well, not more than yellow, but like next to yellow, these are the type of blues that I actually really love. I can't resist. And I, I'm more than happy to have multiples of these. And then of course, I did not open my polishes again because you know, instant gratification, but I am going to um, swatch KL Polishes St. Clair right here. There you go. So, yep. That, I mean, actually, <laughs> I think cornflower may have a better formula. I'm not sure, and I really thought that Kale Polish's formula for this periwinkle is excellent. So I can't really wait to wear um, cornflower. And then I'm gonna do Bikini Sotini underneath it. So here's Bikini Sotini. And I wonder if this seems to be the brightest of the bunch, and I wonder if it's because of that shimmer. What I find with these SE shimmers that don't really translate onto the nail as shimmers is that it just brightens up the base a little bit. And I think you can see that right there. So yeah, I mean, they are similar, but I don't think they're 100% exactly the same. Um, I think that if you wore these three on the nail, you would still see a good difference, probably especially with Bikini Sotini, which is coming out a little bit brighter than the rest of these two. But this is KL Polishes St. Clair. This is um, Olive Ave Polishes Cornflower, and this is Essie's Bikini Sotini. So the next polish I have for you guys is Hyacinth, and this is a beautiful sort of peachy pink, sort of orange leaning coral. I don't have a lot of these shades because I always kind of find that these shades don't go very well with my skin tone. Um, but I'm actually eager to try this. I don't know why, but I'm so eager to try it. I, again, don't have anything in my collection quite like it. The closest that I have is this one, and it's not even close. And this is Essie's Full Swing. And as you can see, they're quite different, really. Sorry about the ugly bottle syndrome. Um, I did pull out my Miss Honey from KL Polish. They're not at all the same. Miss Honey is a little bit more beige. It's more nude. Um, and I most of my corals are more pink leaning corals because I think that's what I prefer. I do have um, 
Colleen here from Zoya's new collection. And I, again, it's not, you know, it's, it's pinky and it's a pastel, but it's not at all the same. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swatch these two. All right, so I'm going to do Hyacinth on the very edge right there. And here it is. So pretty, oh my goodness. I'm wondering if there's enough pink in this polish to kind of offset uh, the peach so that it doesn't clash with my skin tone. What's that piece of lint? I'm gonna take that out because I'm OCD about that stuff. And let me just kind of pile that on over here because I don't think I really did a good job of that. Yeah, that's good. All right, so that right there is one coat of hyacinth. I'm gonna try to see if, oof. Oh, this might not be too bad on my skin tone. Oh, now I'm excited. All right, and then I'm gonna do a coat of In Full Swing next to it. And as you can see, that is a little bit, not a little bit, actually, that's a lot brighter than hyacinth. So this is like more, I don't know, more summery, I guess. So yeah, so I can safely say that Hyacinth is very unique to my collection and I have nothing like it and it's very pretty and I can't wait to wear it. So the next polish that I have for you is the one that I was most excited about in the collection and this is Lemon Blossom. And Lemon Blossom is this sort of beautiful, warm, um, pastel yellow. I do have a couple of yellows that are quite similar and the reason why I was super excited about this is that it reminded me a lot of Revlon's Buttercup which is the actual first yellow pastel yellow that I felt suited you know a variety of skin tones. Um, now that I have both next to each other you can see that Revlon's Buttercup is definitely a little bit more sort of lemon yellow whereas um, Lemon Blossom is a tad bit more um, warmer. Um, I did pull out B and even though B and uh, Lemon Blossom has the same sort of like undertone. It gets a little bit of a warmer yellow. B is just a tad bit too rich for comparison. Now, the one polish I have that is somewhat closest to Lemon Blossom is this new Expressi right here. And this is Busy Beeline. But Busy Beeline is also a tad bit more beige. But as you can see, these three are kind of fairly close. They're different, but they're fairly close. So I'm gonna swatch these three for you. So I'm gonna put Lemon Blossom right in the middle here. And it's such a gorgeous yellow, you guys. Look at that. Oh my goodness. It's so perfect for, um, Easter, I think for the Easter season. And I have been kind of wearing these super light um, yellows for Easter lately. Like last year I wore an indie um, called, I think Ugly Duckling from Pretty Serious. I'm not comparing that with this one because that was very almost like stark white, like very green undertoned yellow so it doesn't, it doesn't belong in the same family, but that right there is Lemon Blossom, one coat. And I'm gonna do Buttercup right on top of it. Okay, whoopsies, see the formula super runny. I'm like so heavy handed, that's awful. But yep, that right there is Revlon's Buttercup. And so as you can see, I mean, I don't know, maybe I did a thicker coat on this one, but I'm gonna do two coats later, just so you guys can see. I'm gonna do a recap of everything in two coats, but it does seem like um, Buttercup is a little bit more of that lemony yellow compared to Lemon Blossom. And then I'm gonna do Busy Beeline, which is the new Expressi right underneath here. 
And this is really a very almost like neutral beigey yellow. I don't even, it's, it's even hard to classify it as a yellow, to be honest. It's very beige. And so that right there is um, Busy Beeline. And I hope you can see that you can discern the difference. This one is like almost even more like peachy, I guess. It has like a peach undertone to the yellow. This one is more like a white, uh, very balanced, very gorgeous. And this one is like very lemony. So those are the three comparisons that I have for you for Lemon Blossom. And last but not the least is this polish right here. And this is Rhododendron. And it is an absolutely gorgeous pinky purple is what I call it. And I actually have two polishes that are similar but not quite the same. And I always say that if these two polishes that I'm about to show you had a baby, it would be rhododendron. So this right here is Essie's Playdate. And as you can see, this is much more purple than rhododendron right here. So this is has a tad bit more pink, but Playdate is quite close. I have to say though, I think if I remember correctly, Playdate has quite a sheer formula. Um, and then this is Splash of Grenadine, which is even more pink than Rhododendron. So I feel like if Playdate and Splash of Grenadine had a baby, it would be Rhododendron. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna swatch these three for you guys today. So I'm gonna do Rhododendron right in the middle. And oof, that is a very beautiful sort of uh, purple, pinky purple. It has a very dusty quality to it, which I absolutely love and I think the formula is great on this one also and then I am going to do play date right on top of it so as you can see play date is definitely that purple is so much more stronger it doesn't have it doesn't really have a very dusty quality to it like I feel like it's just like a this would be what you would call, I think, a straight up pinky purple. It doesn't have that kind of um, mauve-y like, appeal to it, as you can see. So that is Playdate right there compared to Rhododendron. And then right in the bottom here, I'm going to put Splash of Grenadine. Now this one is definitely much more pink than the three, of, than the other two. So again, if you love this sort of color family and you're looking to go clean or, you know, you just want to add to your collection, Rhododendron is really very pretty. So those are the three comparisons right there. And I think now you know what I mean by these two having a baby. <laughs> this right here is um, Playdate by Essie. This is Olive Ab Nails um, Rhododendron, or Olive Ab Polish Rhododendron, and this is Splash of Grenadine from Essie. So that's it, you guys. These are my comparisons for the new Olive Ab Polish line created by Walker from Olive Ab Nails. Um, you can get these polishes at oliveavpolish.com. They retail for $9.50 each, but they do have some discounted bundles. And this really, I think, is my favorite among the bunch. I know Lemon Blossom would be what I would think my favorite is, but this is just a beautiful Tiffany blue, and this is Aster. And so... These are the swatch sticks. These are all two coats now, and I probably should have really thought about this better because I probably could have consolidated these two on each of these swatch sticks, but oh, whatever. I, you know what I mean? It is what it is. I'm, you know, I don't plan these things. I'm sure I can find some more periwinkles and pinky purples to add to this line right here, but I wanted to um, show you them again as a recap. So these were the first that I did. 
This is Calla Lily right here, and this is Fashion Playground, both at two coats. So now at two coats, you can really see they are very different. So it's safe to say that I don't have anything like Calla Lily in my collection, and I find it difficult to kind of look for one off the top of my head um, for, you know, uh, products that I don't personally own. Um, if I saw something like this color, I can't imagine how I wouldn't be purchasing it because I love it. But yeah, these are very different. Um, that yellow shimmer in Calla Lily just gives it something really special, you guys, and it's just so pretty. Now, this one right here, this is Aster from Olive Ave Polish, and this is um, Blossom Dandy. And as you can see, I think that Aster is actually more of a Tiffany blue than um, Blossom Dandy. Although, now that it's drying, Aster also has a kind of like a dustier blue quality to it that is just so pretty. Hi, I'm I'm just loving these guys. So those are my comparisons for Calla Lily and Aster. Now the next polishes I did were Hyacinth and Lemon Blossom, I think. So now these are two coats and you can really see now at two coats how different these yellows are and how I have nothing like um, Hyacinth in my collection. So this is Hyacinth right here, and I, I mean, look at that. It's just, look at it, against my skin tone. I'm actually super excited to wear this now. And then this one right here is um, in Full Swing from Essie, which is quite different. This I would probably be wearing more in the summertime. I have nothing like it, so I, I, I already have two from this line that is unique to my collection, which is perfection. This right here is Lemon Blossom. And this one is a Buttercup from Revlon. And they're not the same at all. Like I said, this one is more lemony. It's a little bit more of a richer yellow. This one right here, oh, I have that lint in the middle. Well, there you go. This one right here is Busy Beeline, which is a little bit more peachier, a little bit more beige. It has like a very beige undertone type of yellow. So these three are very different. I know I have a couple more yellows, but I picked the two that were really closest because I'm telling you guys, if I'm going to compare all my yellows to Lemon Blossom, we're probably going to have like a day long video because I have so many yellows, but these are the two that I feel are closest and have kind of like a similar vibe and they are very different. So I'm so excited for that. And then the next one here is Cornflower and Cornflower is right here in the middle. And I would probably say, you know, I'm um, just sort of like looking at the swatch stick and not through the viewfinder, Cornflower is the richest among the three. KL Polish is very close though. I mean, super close. I know they're not the same exactly, but I would say that these would be 98% dupes. If you have KL Polish, you could probably do away with Cornflower or if you don't have KL Polishes, um, what do you call this? Uh, St. Clair, and you know it's, you know, already, the store is already closed and you want some alternative because you don't want to pay scalpers for them. <laughs> um, Cornflower from Olive App Polish is definitely beautiful. I have to say though that Kale Polish's formula, I'm finding that it's not as good as I once thought it was. Um, Cornflower definitely has a better formula than Kale Polish's um, St. Clair. This is Bikini Sotini, which is the brightest among the bunch. And it definitely has a little bit more of that purple undertone. Um, I can see that as I'm looking at the swatch stick. I don't know if it translates in the viewfinder, but yeah, so I would probably say these two are closest, but this one has a better formula. Olive have polish has a better formula. And so yeah, those are my comparisons for Cornflower. And then last but not the least, I have Rhododendron. 
and this is rhododendron right here and this one is play date which is a very popular essie polish and this one is splash of grenadine so um again I'm, I'm scrambling to think if i really missed anything that is similar to rhododendron but um I don't think so and so uh yeah those are my comparisons so that's it you guys thank you so much for being here with me to chat about olive av polish and if you like to uh chat about anything and everything now polish please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button for notifications comment down below if any of these shades interest you if you plan to um pick up any of these if i personally i'm i can't wait for uh walker's next collection to come out so i can buy it again i think that for these shades the formula so far is amazing um, I am very happy to find out based on my comparisons that I really don't have anything exactly like these polishes. I do have some similar ones, but like this is the, again the reason why I don't keep backups because I always want to have, you know, similar polishes that have nuanced differences among them so I'm very happy to have all of these in my collection and I hope that if you're an Essie lover or if you have you know if you're a lover of pastels and creams like I am that um, you kind of have an idea of what of where these shades kind of sit in the grand scheme of nail polish collecting um, I think they're absolutely beautiful and I'm so um, excited for Walker for this launch of her brand and for this first collection. I think it's very well done. And yeah, that's it. Comment down below what your thoughts are and I will catch you again in my next video. Have a great day, guys. Bye.